So we're gonna click get results and Google's keyword planner is basically going to give us some information. So the keyword we chose was meal delivery and they're telling us that on average over the last 12 months, there's 22,200 search queries on average over the last 12 months. Okay, so I could see if I click hover over the graph here, I'm gonna be able to see the average over 12 months. Okay, so here I could see the average over 12 months from July to June 2019. So here, what do I wanna do? I wanna look for trends. Because you, here I could see the averages go up and down a little bit. But 22,200 is the average over 12 months. And then Google's Keyword Planner also tells me how competitive that keyword is. So if it's highly competitive, but it's got a lot of search volume, it could be a keyword I may want to covet. But the beauty of the Keyword Planner is that they also give you other keywords to look at. Okay, so Mail Delivery Service is 49,500. Okay, so here you got some other ones. Best food delivery service, 9,900. Again, some of these are very competitive, but some of them aren't. And so you wanna be able to do your due diligence, do some analysis and figure out what keywords work best for you that aren't gonna be competitive, but at the same time, give you some search volume. So if you do rank for that keyword, you should expect X amount of clicks on that keyword based on the volume. So that's Google's Keyword Planner. Alternatively, you can use a tool like Moz.com. So if I log into Moz, they have a tool called Keyword Explorer. And so here I can just type in that same keyword, mail delivery, targeting the United States in English, and Moz is going to give me some information on the keyword. So here, they're gonna give me a range in terms of the monthly volume, and they're gonna give me a difficulty score. So they're gonna tell me how difficult this keyword is. So out of a score of 100, it's 53, and they're gonna tell me what my expected click-through rate could be if I'm ranking for that keyword. More importantly, they're going to give me some other keyword suggestions, just like Google's Keyword Planner. So here, I can see prepared mail delivery, mail delivery service, mail delivery companies. So there are a lot of different suggestions of keywords that I can choose from. And if we scroll down, we could see basically some mentions, we could see the analysis, who's ranking for these keywords. So we can really get some insight as to who's ranking, how much volume, how difficult it is, what my estimates could be if I'm ranking, et cetera. So a lot of information built into Moz's Keyword Explorer tool. So Moz's Keyword Explorer tool could be a good option for you if you don't have access to Google Ads and Google's Keyword Planner. So if you're working on SEO for a website and you're curious is about what the off-page SEO situation looks like, well, you can use a tool like Ahrefs. It's a free tool. You can go here, and if you're working on a specific domain and you're focused on off-page, you could simply type in that domain here, and then you could check the backlinks for that domain. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and type in my, do my domain, and now I'm gonna get a sense of what my backlink profile is for my domain. So here I can see the number of backlinks, the total backlinks, and notice 85% of them are do follow links. So Google is able to recognize those links. And then I could see referring domains. So I have 124 different domains pointing to my website. And so here I can get a snapshot of the top 100 backlinks pointing to my website. And so this just gives me a snapshot of what's going on with my off-page SEO performance. Again, it's a free tool. It's good to use because it gives you an idea of what your off-page SEO situation looks like. Okay, another tool you could use is Pingdom. Okay, you can set up a free trial here. It's good for 14 days and it allows you to, you know, look at page speed. It allows you to monitor the site itself in terms of, you know, visitors, maintenance, etc. So you can use Pingdom as well. Uh, however, it's only a 14 day free trial, but it does give you some good insights into SEO.
Now, page load time is one of those on-page SEO factors. And so if you're doing on-page SEO for domain, you certainly want to go into Google Analytics and you want to measure the page load performance of the pages on your website. And so here, if I go to Google Analytics and then I go to behavior and I go to site speed and I go to speed suggestions, here I could see the pages, how many pages I've received over a period of time, and then the average page load time. Now, if you see the average page load time is slow, and in my opinion, anything over two to three seconds is going to be slow, you need to be able to take action. And so the great thing about Google Analytics, the page load time reporting, is it actually gives you some suggestions. So page speed suggestions. So all you need to do is click on the link here. In this case, this particular link or URL on my website has seven suggestions. If I click on that, then page speed insights is going to open up. And what's going to happen is Google Analytics slash page speed insights is going to analyze this page and give me some feedback on how the page is performing not only on desktop but on mobile as well and so here i can see if i analyze this page i can see some of the opportunities to improve the page load time on desktop and again on mobile here so here you can see a lot of the opportunities and a lot of the issues i have that i can address now, if you're going to manage SEO for a website, then you're going to need an SEO platform. So again, Moz is a good example because we showed you the keyword explorer, but they also have many other tools available built right into the platform. For example, rankings. Okay, you can get crawl information. So when the bots crawl the site, what kind of errors are coming up? Here I can get some page optimization so I can choose a keyword and I could choose a page and Moz is going to be able to give me feedback to see what more I could do to improve my on-page SEO performance. Okay, we mentioned Keyword Explorer in terms of looking for keywords. Okay, you also have something called Link Explorer as well. So if I go back and choose Link Explorer from my list here, then I'm gonna to go to a Link Explorer and I could type in any domain. Again, just like on the Ahrefs, Except Moz goes a little bit deeper here. Okay, so they're telling me how many linking domains and what my keywords are ranking. Okay, and then I have some other reports that I can leverage for off page SEO. I can look at spam scores for certain websites that are linking to me because you can disavow yourself from being associated with those sites. Here you got a link intersect tool so you can compare one domain against another to what links are pointing to that other website. So a lot of different reports and tools available to you for off-page SEO under Moz's Link Explorer. So Moz has a lot of different tools available. And again, my recommendation, if you don't use Moz, there's SEMrush, there's Bright Edge. There's a lot of SEO platforms out there to use, but if you're gonna focus on SEO, you are going to need an SEO platform. Now, if you have any more questions on SEO, you know, feel free to go to Simply Learn's YouTube account. You'll be able to find a video there for SEO tutorial for beginners. You know, take a look at the video. It goes really in depth about everything we just covered about on-page and off-page SEO. So take a look at the video. And if you have any comments about everything we covered with SEO, feel free to comment underneath this video here and we'll be sure to respond accordingly, uh, especially if you have any tips and tricks that you do for SEO. So let's move from search engine optimization to content marketing. And so content marketing is a form of marketing that involves simulating interest in a brand's products or services by creating and sharing online material. So when we talk about online material that can come in many forms or assets. So some examples are blogs, videos, infographics, case studies, white papers, eBooks. All of this is content generated. It's just in different forms. And so you wanna be able to take any one of these forms of content and be able to distribute that in some form or fashion, okay? So for example, a blog can be part of your website. 
a video could be something you upload to YouTube. An infographic could be something you actually share on LinkedIn. So all these other assets could be integrated throughout. They could be shared or used on your website, okay? For people to grab and share and use and comment on, okay? So that's what content marketing is. You need to be able to push out content so that people have a better understanding of your product or service. The process of content marketing is you really wanna decide what goal you want to achieve with your content marketing campaign. You want to define your buyer personas to determine the audience best suited for your content. Okay, so what are you creating? Who is it for? And then you want to run content audits to determine the best type of content that can be used. And when we talk about content audits, we're talking about, you know, content that's already been posted. Are people sharing it? Are people downloading? Are people viewing it? And so you want to be able to understand over time what people are reacting to so that you can reuse or continue to use that content that seems to resonate with your target audience. So you want to choose an appropriate content management system. So if it's a blog, you want to use WordPress maybe. So you want to start brainstorming for ideas, for new content ideas. So in my opinion, maybe put together a content calendar and jot some ideas on that content calendar. Then you wanna settle on a particular type of content you wanna create, and then you wanna be able to publish and manage your content. So some top popular tools used for content marketing, you, know, you have Buffer, you have Buzzsumo, FollowerWonk, Hootsuite. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of a content marketing management system. And we're gonna use WordPress. And so if we go into WordPress here, on the back end, we're logging a login. And so the reason why we use WordPress is because we can post blogs. So in WordPress, if I go to post here, I'm gonna be able to see all the different posts that have been posted over a period of time. And the great thing about WordPress is you can optimize it for SEO. So if I go in here and look at this recent blog post that has been posted, I can go ahead and edit it. And when I edit it, okay, I'm gonna be able to look at this blog post in a visual format, and I can also look at it in HTML form. So notice, I the great thing about WordPress is I can use imagery, I can insert videos, I can insert infographics, I can attach a white paper case study to it. And then again, we have something called Yoast SEO plugin. So we've installed a plugin here, so that'll help us with optimizing that particular blog post for that particular keyword we're trying to target. And so here you can see our focus keyword is remarketing and retargeting. Okay, so we have that in the title tag. Okay, and we also wanna make sure it's in the meta description. And so here we have an internal link. We have it in the introduction. Okay, we have it you know, spread throughout the content. So Yoast does a good job of allowing us to make sure we're integrating that keyword into our blog post. But the key to blog posting is we want to again follow the process. We want to be able to choose content for our intended audience. And in this case with a blog post, we can write up to, you know, 500 to 3000 keywords. And the whole point is we're trying to introduce our audience to a particular topic that resonates with our product or service. And so that's the great thing about blogging. That's the great thing about WordPress is that, you know, very easy to use. Uh, you can integrate it with SEO. You obviously have commenting, you have different plugins that you can add in there, uh, very easy to edit. And so there's a lot you can do here with WordPress and blogging. So another example of content marketing is video. So with video, you have the ability to upload this video to popular video sites like YouTube or Video, and you can optimize that particular video with title tags and, and hashtags and descriptions. And you could see the interaction here. So you can see how many views, how many likes, 
shares, the ability to share, the ability of people for saving it. And there's just a lot of interactivity when you have video. You can also use video, as I mentioned, on your blogging platform. If it's WordPress, you can also use video in social media platforms like Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. So video is a very popular form of content marketing. Lots of good video tools out there to create a video. A high quality video is what you want to put your product and service in the best forefront. Okay, so that people can react, they can share, they can comment, they can follow, they can like. Okay, so that's what you want to do is think about video because video is very versatile and powerful in terms of getting your message out there. So let's move from content marketing to social media marketing. And social media marketing really involves creating content if it's that blog if it's that video that you created for content marketing and really using different platforms to increase your visibility whether that be traffic whether it be engagement whether it be brand awareness or any other marketing goals that you have that's what social media is good for because social media will take that content take what you're trying to get out there and really allow you to hone your marketing goals against that Okay, so if it's Facebook and you got some videos that you want to post up there, okay, what's your goal? Is your goal to then post the video to get traffic to your website or to build brand awareness or to just get people to react by sharing or liking? And so that's what social media is good for. It's really good for taking content and really distributing it to your target audience. Okay, so uh, sharing content allows you to, you know, generate user generated content or it allows you to create interactive content. And again, you can use infographics or you can apply content with imagery or post videos or do things that are interactive like polling and contests. So a lot of flexibility in terms of the content that you could share on social media. And so you want to establish a process for social media marketing. So this is the digital marketing course of it. So you want to be able to have a process and you want to be able to set up goals that you want to achieve with your social media campaign because just posting content for content sake is really not going to generate anything for you. So you want to set up those goals ahead of time. Then you want to understand what content would be best suited for your target audience. So if our goal is to generate brand awareness, then maybe an infographic is what we want to do. Okay, maybe that's the best choice of asset for our target audience based on the platform. With social media, we also want to research what the competition is and find out what works for them. So it's very easy to do on social. So if you already have a competitor on Facebook, you can always go to your competitor's website and you can always see you know what they're posting and what kind of reaction engagement they're getting for a particular post so it doesn't help before you go live to do some due diligence about your competition you can also conduct a social media audit and again what we mean by audit just like on the content side we want to be able to see what's worked and what's not worked in the past and with digital marketing recall you can get instant metrics back so if you posted something last year and you're thinking about posting it again, you probably want to do an audit to see over the past year what posts have worked and have not worked for you. Then you want to pick and choose the social media channels or platforms and to find a strategy for each of them. Because if you have a video, then the video may work on, say, YouTube or Instagram, but may not necessarily work for LinkedIn and Twitter. And so you want to be able to pick and choose the asset, the strategy, and align it with the appropriate platform. Then you want to take inspiration from case studies and other famous brands. So again, continue to learn. I mean, that's the beauty of social media marketing. Most big companies, medium-sized companies, even smaller companies that have performed well are out on social media. So take a look at some other companies that inspire you or some other companies in your industry or even, again, your competitors and see what they're doing and what they're posting and what kind of engagement they're getting. So you should always, you know, be able to seek out what others are doing on social. And to me, this is important. Create a social media content calendar and 
this isn't necessarily the very end of the process. This goes back to the beginning of the process. So 